James Bond, MI6 Agent 007, Licensed to Kill, and perhaps the last British film hero, was created by former Naval Intelligence Officer Ian Fleming in his series of very popular fictional novels that appeared from 1953 onwards, and is a screen legend with, to date, 25 official Bond films made by Eon Productions. In the official films, Bond has been portrayed by six actors, from Sean Connery in 1962, up to Daniel Craig in 2021. The fictional Bond's background is naval. He is a commander in the Royal Naval Reserve, whilst also serving in British intelligence. Expert in skiing, unarmed combat, parachuting, martial arts like judo, and of course driving, I've often wondered about the military backgrounds of the actors that have played Bond on film. Which one comes closest to the fictional James Bond of the movies? In fact, one actor who played Bond definitely had many of the skills of 007, and they were partly the reason why he was asked to play Britain's best secret agent. I wonder if you can guess who it was? The first official Eon Productions James Bond was of course the legendary Sean Connery. Born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1930 into a poor working class family, he grew up fast and was a teenager during World War II. At the age of 16, in 1945, Connery enlisted in the Royal Navy as an ordinary seaman, completing his initial training in Portsmouth on England's south coast at the Naval Gunnery School, his specialism being as an anti-aircraft gunner. Promoted to able seaman, he went to sea aboard the aircraft carrier HMS Formidable. At 18, Connery started bodybuilding in the Navy, but at 19 was discharged as medically unfit due to a duodenal ulcer, becoming a lorry driver, a lifeguard, a labourer, and an artist model and competitive bodybuilder and footballer before entering acting in late 1951. He first portrayed James Bond in Doctor No in 1962 and appeared seven times as 007 including the non-Eon Productions film Never Say Never Again in 1983. Knighted by the Queen in 2000, Sir Sean Connery died in 2020, aged 90. The Bond I grew up with in the 1970s and 80s was of course Roger Moore. The son of a London policeman, Moore was born in 1927. Like Connery, Moore was too young to serve in World War II, but at the tail end of the war, he was hired as a film extra and went on to study at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. Like all young men of the time, he was called up for national service, an obligatory 18 months of military service for all men between the ages of 17 and 21. Being reasonably well educated and sounding like an officer, the army made him one. He was trained and commissioned as a second lieutenant on the 21st of September 1946, joining the Royal Army Service Corps, the branch of the army responsible for land transportation, administration of barracks, supplies and so on. A sort of Q branch, if you like. One of the leftovers of World War II was combined services entertainment, basically actors and other entertainers in uniform who put on shows for the troops stationed all over the world and Moore wrangled an attachment to them. He was promoted eventually to captain and given command of a small depot in Hamburg in the British occupation zone of Germany, where he looked after army entertainers that were passing through the city. Once demobilized in 1947, Moore returned to theatrical work, then TV, and worked as a model, particularly in men's knitwear, earning his famous nickname, The Big Knit, before going over to the US and becoming a TV actor there. When Sean Connery announced that he would stop playing Bond in 1966, Moore was interested in the role, but was largely unavailable due to filming commitments for his popular TV series The Saint. Moore was eventually cast in 1972, following Connery's last Eon Bond film Diamonds Are Forever in 1971. Moore first appeared as 007 in 1973's Live and Let Die and would play the character seven times, the last being A View to a Kill in 1985. Incidentally, the first bomb film I saw at the cinema at the age of 11. Moore was knighted in 2003 and died in 2017 aged 89. 
The producers of the Bond films wanted an Irish actor who was very famous at the time in the US to step into Moore's shoes as Bond, but Pierce Brosnan was contractually obligated to his TV series Remington Steel. Instead, Timothy Dalton was approached in 1986 to take over as 007. Dalton had been considered for the role of Bond to replace Sean Connery for the film Live and Let Die, but had declined the role in 1972, feeling that he was too young. After much negotiations by the producers with Dalton and Brosnan, the part went to Timothy Dalton. Born in Wales to English parents in 1946, his father had been a captain in Special Operations Executive SOE, during World War II, so Dalton was the first actor to play Bond with a real-life connection to the world of spies and espionage. Educated in England, whilst at school he had his only brush with the military when he served in the Air Training Corps, a volunteer youth organisation part of the Royal Air Force. I myself also was in the ATC for a while as a teenager. At 16, he went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art to begin his acting career, later appearing on stage and TV and making his film debut in 1968's The Lion in Winter. Dalton only played Bond twice, The Living Daylights in 1987 and License to Kill in 1989, determined to play the character much more closely to Fleming's original books contracted for a third film, a legal battle between MGM and the film's producers lasted for five years, and Dalton decided to move on to other projects. Dalton is still acting today, and is currently 77 years old. Next to play the role was one of my favourites, Pierce Brosnan, who was announced as the new 007 in 1994. Born in the Republic of Ireland in 1953, he left school at 16 to train as a commercial illustrator before training in London as an actor. After some theatre work, Brosnan moved into film and TV parts, becoming a big star in the US with the TV miniseries Mannions of America, and from 1982, the titular role in Remington Steel, playing a character very similar to James Bond. Brosnan has no military experience of his own, but played Commander Bond four times, beginning with what is in my opinion one of the best in the series, Goldeneye in 1995, through to Die Another Day in 2002. Brosnan remains one of the top actors in the world and is currently 70 years old. The next 007 was Daniel Craig, who took over the part for Casino Royale in 2006. Craig was born in Chester, England in 1968 and began his career at the National Youth Theatre before moving to TV and film roles. Casino Royale gained Craig a BAFTA award for Best Actor in the Leading Role, an unusual accolade for the James Bond film series. He would play Bond five times, his last Bond film being 2021's No Time to Die. Craig has no formal military service, but interestingly in September 2021 he was appointed an honorary commander in the Royal Naval Reserve, making him the first Bond actor to actually hold the same rank as the fictional character. The British Armed Forces has followed the path of appointing notable people to honorary military ranks to help increase public interest in the armed forces and also encourage recruitment. Another example of this is Bear Grylls, the former reserve SAS soldier and TV presenter, who was made an honorary lieutenant colonel in the Royal Marines Reserve in 2013, later promoted to honorary colonel in 2021. Or the British politician and leader of the House of Commons, Penny Mordaunt, who was an honorary captain in the Royal Naval Reserve, thereby outranking Commander Craig. Daniel Craig is currently 55 years old. Now, those of you who are paying attention will notice that I seem to have made a mistake concerning the list of James Bond actors. I've left one out. That's because the missing man is, I believe, the closest to the fictional Bond of all six actors who have played him in the official movies. And that man is George Lazenby. Born in 1939 in Goulburn, New South Wales, Australia, Lazenby turned up in London in 1963, becoming a used car salesman in Finchley, and then a male model, and by 1966 was voted top male model of the year. He got the part of Bond purely by chance, meeting Bond producer Albert R. Broccoli in a barber shop. 
Broccoli invited him to a screen test as Sean Connery was leaving the role. During the audition, during a mock fight scene, Lazenby punched a professional wrestler, the scout coordinator, for real, impressing Broccoli with his ability to display aggression. He wasn't an actor, but he oozed the hint of danger and sexual appeal that the role required. But he also brought something to the role, authentic danger. Why? Because Lazenby was a former Special Forces soldier. He had enlisted in the Australian Army and served in their Special Forces, reaching the rank of Sergeant. He was also a black belt in both Judo and Shotokan Ryu Karate, and an unarmed combat expert, as well as being an expert skier. Broccoli signed Lazenby up for seven films, the first being on Her Majesty's Secret Service in 1969. But though reasonably popular as Bond, his agent talked him out of further Bond movies in favour of the then fashionable hippie films of the era. And after a Connery return for a film was succeeded by Roger Moore. But of all the men who have played 007, George Lazenby was probably the most authentic, who most closely resembled the look and skills of Ian Fleming's fictional creation. Today, Lazenby is 84 years old. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.